Hi folks, this is your host Mandeep and in today's session we're going to focus on how to achieve consistent results day trading. Now, um, as a trader, all of you will develop your own trading methodology based on your risk profile uh, and your own style of trading. So, so this uh, you know methodology that I'm sharing with you guys is something that uh, you know works for me and this is what I use uh, for uh, day trading. So what I'll do in this is just uh, you know go through a couple slides uh, and uh, highlight the step-by-step -step process of what I use. And um, as always, uh, you know the it, when it comes to trading, you want to be able to dive in into real charts and uh, see actual performance. Uh, and 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 see whether this strategy actually worked or it didn't. You know, now um, there's a lot of people you'll see them on Twitter that they talk about um, the fact that they you know sat down and they scan through like 200 charts and now they're down to 100 charts, and that's something that uh, you know I don't do in, in this um, setup that I have. So my aim is not to spend uh, an enormous amount of time after hours or over the weekend, you know, scanning through, uh, you know, hundreds of charts when you have automation available today, when you can, you know, program, you have artificial intelligence, you have the ability to backtest, uh, you can create some, you know, complex scans. And the way uh, my methodology works is that it creates um, a list of stocks to trade each day. So that's why I don't need to, you know, look at them over the weekend. So I fire up my lap, laptop in the morning um, and see uh, within 10 to 15 minutes what uh, you know stocks are showing up on the scan that I have. Um, and then I use a further filtering mechanism to figure out what stocks to trade. Anyway, without further ado, let's just go through the step-by-step -step process and then I'll you know dive into the actual charts and uh, you'll be able to see um, how those uh, actually work out. So the first thing we're going to look at is, uh, uh, you know, we go through a list of the sector analysis, which uh, I think is of paramount importance. It's really uh, the fundamental thing that I focus on, and that's what I, um, you know, uh, try to instill upon the users that I have in my Discord room. And this is the first thing you need to look at. So it's very important to figure out which uh, sectors are moving and uh, subsequent to that you can start focusing on stocks that are part of that sector uh, and generally they tend to move together. So that gives you a much higher probability of trade. The second thing is to figure out what to trade within those sectors, right? Which stocks are really um, showing a strong momentum that you want to focus on. Uh, and last but not the least, you want to focus on when to trade them. And, and that's really important uh, because, you know, for stocks moved up significantly, um, you need to wait for the stock to retrace and be at a point where, um, you know, you get in a high probability trade at that uh, that part of the day. And that's when, you know, the signal that we have called the ultimate trading strategy um, comes into play where it tells you exactly when's a, a good spot to actually get into this trade. So, so once you've identified which sectors are leading, um, and I'll show that to you live in a couple of minutes, um, you want to then, you know, select long candidates from within that sector. Um, and then if uh, a market is trending in the downward direction, then uh, focus on sectors which are at the bottom of the list and then pick your short candidates from within this sector. It's just as simple as that, right? So the thing that I want to talk about methodology is that whatever you come up with, it needs to be consistent, it needs to be repeatable, and you should be able to trade that day in, day out, right? Once you actually get to that point, you will realize that although this is a tough business, but uh, you can actually you know, do extremely well if you follow some simple steps. Now, what I mean by a consistent uh, you know, method of trading is that uh, once you've developed uh, what works for you, you don't need to be changing it each day, right? Of course, you need to make in incremental improvements to it. Uh, you want to, you know, modify it. But, uh, you know, if you, let's say you trade on the 15-minute chart, you know, the very next day you can't just switch to five or a three-minute chart. I mean, that wouldn't work because that would just completely, um, you know, lead you to more whipsaws in your trade, etc. So whatever time frame you end up choosing, just stay consistent with that, at least for some reasonable amount of time, um, and then move on to a different time frame, right? So whatever you have tested over a period of time, use that for a week or a couple of weeks, um, and that's exactly what I do, right? I have 
a fixed set of rules that I follow and you know I try and you know use exactly the same method each day uh, and uh, win lose or draw right so now what happens with this is like I definitely have losing trades in, in losing trades in the day but uh, you know m more often than not at least the, at the end of the day I'm overall positive so or at least in the week I'm definitely overall positive so um, and then uh, what to trade so you need a scan uh, that filters that filters the stocks that fit your trading profile right and uh, you can filter based on all stocks you can just filter based on stocks that are optionable you can also look at all weekly options or you can focus on stocks that within a, that are within a certain price range uh, you know which have a certain amount of volume or have a certain um, average through range now if the list has too many stocks then what I do is, you know, I have a, a column list and uh, and I use, uh, you know, a couple uh, different things. So I, I look at the, you know, opening range breakout, right? So the opening range breakout is essentially, uh, you know, the high and the low that's established between the first 15 minutes. It could be 30 minute or the or, uh, hourly orb. So my favorite is actually the 15 minute orb. So that's what I focus on most. But... I will sometimes also wait if the market's very volatile in the first, you know, 30 minutes to to see which stocks have broken out of the 30 minute uh, range. Um, the most important thing that I focus on is the high relative volume. And I'll show you what um, that entails. And finally, it's something called the ATR sizzle index. And we'll talk about that also in, in, in a minute. Right. And lastly, when to trade, right? You need to define your entry and exit points and uh, it doesn't matter what you use, whatever your favorite indicators are, you need to, you know, test them and, and stick by them, right? Uh, in our case, we use the ultimate trading strategy for, you know, consistent results and I'll show you uh, the level of consistency this strategy produces and um, it'll provide you the long or the short entries and when the trade closes, it'll give you the option of sell to close for long positions or buy to cover for short positions okay now let's uh, you know go back and focus on uh, the sector performance which i talked about is the first thing that i look at in the morning so on friday of course it was a trending day the market was um, you know just uh, moving up rapidly so the first thing i noticed is you know what are the top five or six sectors and there was like plenty of choices um, at least on friday so OIH, which is um, an oil ETF that was on top, we had uh, from a percentage change standpoint, we had um, the railroad sector, which was doing well. Uh, then, of course, crude uh, futures that you can see on the top. XOP is another oil future. USO is also uh, an oil ETF. Uh, and XOP is an ETF as well, I apologize. And then you have metals. You had uh, the XBI, which is the small tech um, a small tech biotech index. Uh, we have banking. We had IBB, which is the the large, uh, um, you know, uh, drug sector companies and healthcare companies are included uh, in, in this ETF. So in general, I knew where the focus uh, is, you know, and clearly there were like opportunities in technologies as well. Now the next step we do is we, you know, we have you can have a couple different lists and as part of the ultimate trading strategy I provide people uh, a list or a couple of different lists that they can use uh, to to start and then you know they can um, expand on those lists they can modify those lists or create their own scan so one of the things I try and teach people constantly is um, you know instead of being dependent on me right you just learn how the system works figure out how to modify the scans and once you know that you can create your own scan based on your trading style now um, now, once you have too many stocks in the list, uh, one of the other things I do is in the column, there's uh, like three different uh, items. The first one's the dynamic orb, right? So I've talked about this. The dynamic orb is, in my case, is basically, um, you know, after the first five minutes, it'll tell you which stocks have broken above the five minute bar. Uh, it resets at the 15 and then starts showing you stocks that have broken the 15 minute orb. Then at the 30 minute mark, it resets again. And finally, at the hourly, um, 
uh, hourly as well, right? So at the end of the hour, it'll tell you or show you with the number one which stocks have broken out of those range. The second thing, which is the most important thing, is the relative volume, right? And um, I've mentioned this before, but I'll repeat it again, that this is a unique way of calculating uh, what the relative volume is um, for this particular, for that particular point in time. Right. And when you have high relative volume, it'll show you in green. So clearly we're looking at end of the day data. But in general, even in the first 15, 20 minutes, you'll start to see if this is green, which means if it's at 5 percent or 8 percent and it's green, it means it's trading ahead of what it normally does at that point in time. And uh, now I can, you know, I've done a lot of back testing and, you know, one thing you will know is that when something is high relative volume, those are the stocks that you want to focus on. And finally, this is the ATR system. So each stock has an average true range of what it trades. Uh, what is the uh, you know difference between the high and the low, which is averaged over you know a fourteen period time. Now, when the ATR and that's the average, right? So. If something has an average of three, doesn't mean it's always going to move three, right? And some days it might move four and some days it might move two, but however, it averages out at three. So when this ATR sizzle is green, then the chances are that you have a range expansion, which means it is most likely going to trade above what, above the range that it normally trades. So now in this list, as you can see, there was uh, quite a few stocks, right? But one of the sectors we saw was railroads right so when you see uh, railroad sector being on the top i e immediately start to look for um, you know uh, railroad stocks within the list so you know i found canadian pacific was on the list um, there was uh, nsc which is north fork southern and then we also had um, another one which is um, ksu which is the kansas city southern right so you had three different stocks now let's take a look at each one of them um, first of all, um, one, um, it was uh, the number two sector list. Second, uh, it was available in the scan. Third, more important, this was green across. So it means that it, it had broken the orb. Uh, the volume was ahead of its uh, normal volume showing institutional interest. And finally, it had a high ATR, which means it was likely going to at least hit its uh, entire ATR or at the minimum, uh, or it was going to, you know, go past that, right? So, of course, you know, when you click on it, uh, then the second thing is when to enter, right? Which is where the ultimate trading strategy comes into play. So, in this case, it didn't really give you a buy in the first part, even though it had a slight gap up, it gave you an entry here. And so, once you had the entry, you had the close pretty much at the last uh, bar, and this is a strategy where we are closing trades and not assuming any overnight risk, right? So you can see it had a pretty nice uh, run. And this is just a day trade. Now let's look at uh, Norfolk, Norfolk Southern. And this is something I traded on Friday. Uh, same thing, you know, it didn't, um, uh, on the third bar you got an entry. And, uh, you know, it basically went from almost 183, um, or call it 184, and uh, you know closed at uh, 189 so that was a really decent profit for a day trade uh, and last we'll look at ksu and you'll see uh, a similar phenomena you gotta buy fairly for fairly early on um broke the orb and the stock really you know never stopped after that now we can also look at all of these examples so in this list my focus was on all stocks that were green across the board and while this is end of the day data uh, i can assure you they were green early on in the day as well right so let's take a look at apple um apple had a fantastic entry as well right so pretty much in the first bar uh, you, you know it gave a buy signal and this also uh, never got stopped out during the day uh, and basically continued its um, upward movement now let's uh, you know drill down some other stocks look at csl uh, something that I don't trade normally and I didn't even trade it but just from an academic standpoint um, it had an entry and a close so this was a win as well now when I didn't even focus on anything which was red where it was uh, the volume was below average or the ATR was below average because I had a number of choices um, uh, anyway now we can uh, you know we can look at um, NBIX the reason we were going to look at NBIX because there was XBI and IBB uh, which means the truck sector, small um, small cap and the, uh, sorry, the mid cap and the large cap were in focus. 
um, and look at the trade of this. This is a fantastic trade, opened here and uh, you know, kind of closed uh, at the end of the day. Now, uh, I mean, in case of Apple, I'm going to show you one other thing, which is, uh, you know, I can right click and show you a report and you can actually see that this trade was nicely profitable. It had gave you a profit of $1,000, assuming you traded 300 shares, right? So you can look at the past trades as well. So you had a profit of 142, a profit of 861, 253, uh, sorry, a loss of 253, a gain of 435, and a gain of um, 1K, which uh, netted a total of uh, $2,325 and five trades between 1028 and 11 one. So that's not you know too many days, about four or five days of trading. One particular stock is giving you this result. Now, uh, we can again look at uh, a couple more examples and then we'll start. This is URI, right? And we can look at, uh, again, a report on this. And uh, this was also profitable. It had $13, uh, $1,353 and five trades as well. So, so this is how I end up using this method where each day, right? As, as I said, I'm going to start with a sector list. And then once the sector list establishes uh, which sectors are involved and which are moving, I try and figure out stocks within that sector list. Um, and I usually like to see two or three, right? When you have like two or three sectors, uh, two or three stocks from the same sector, uh, it gives you, um, you know, added confidence. And then furthermore, I filtered, filter it down by uh, looking at these three different columns that I have, right? I look, just focus on stocks that are green across. Now, in general, right, you could go into any list, right, and just focus on stocks that are green across. So we'll do a quick look at that uh, as well. Let's just go into a public list. Uh, let's say the S&P uh, uh, 500 here. Sorry, the S&P 100 list, right? So again, right, I just want to look at things like that were across the board green, right? And so uh, once green, you pretty much when you get an entry, you know, the likelihood is that you will make money in this, right? So again, um, Occidental Petroleum, same concept. Why? Because this is part of uh, the energy sector, right? And we saw the energy sector was on the top. Once you got the buy signal, uh, so it's a profitable trade. And we can look, you know, what we did, we did $192 in that trade. Previous one was 105, prior to that 253 and a loss of $227 for a net gain of 523 total, right? So as you can see, in most cases, when you follow this particular technique, you're going to win. And there's like tons of stocks which didn't meet the criteria, right? So you just, you know, go ahead and ignore all of those. Let's take a look at Berkshire Hathaway stock. Same thing. You had a really nice entry here. And guess what? The thing is, uh, thing was profitable. And we can look at the actual uh, report on it. And we did, you know, 567. So you had one loss, but two wins for a net gain of 438 in three trades, which is not bad. Finally, what I'm going to do is just going to show you a quick uh, um, a synopsis of how this strategy is so far working, right? So um, again, you know, I've actually been using it for much longer, but it's more recently that, um, you know, I, I actually track it as well. So, you know, from uh, September the 16th, this actually generated a total profit of ten thousand dollars, right? And you had seventy-five trades out of which fifty-nine were wins, and you had, uh, you know, profitable uh, trades of seventy-eight point seven percent. So hopefully that gives you a little sense of how I trade. And um, if you have any questions, you can uh, shoot me uh, a message at um, uh, in, in the comments section as well, uh, or, or you can go to my website and uh, you can also. Um, uh, you know, you register if you want, and then you will get notified about new videos. And there's a bunch of free scripts that are available as well. So that's uh, about it for today, folks. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you.